I really hate when I have my eyes taped up like this and then my boyfriend walks in and he's like, What you doing? Get out. I am coming at you today with another makeup tutorial using affordable makeup products. However, the main star of today's video is going to be the new Alter Ego Luster Charm Eyeshadow Palette. This is the Luster Charm 10 color eyeshadow palette. It retails for $22. Alter Ego says an eyeshadow collection inspired by the intricate colors and tones of beautiful gemstones. The prestige color range includes four creamy baked shades and six velvety pressed powders that blend effortlessly in matte, metallic, satin, and duochrome finishes. Look at how freaking stinking beautiful that is. I feel like if I were an eyeshadow palette, this is what I would look like. These beautiful mauves with the beautiful neutral browns and the pops of a duochrome and the pops of shimmer and glitter. This is just Casey in an eyeshadow palette. I just received mine last night, so this will be my very first time using the eyeshadow palette. So I'm very excited to be playing with it with you today. I, I thought since Alter Ego is a relatively affordable makeup brand that the rest of the products that I would use in this tutorial also be relatively affordable. I will be creating this eye look for you today. So all that being said, if you like watching tutorials using affordable makeup and you are intrigued by the new Luster Charm eyeshadow palette, then keep on watching. I am going to be a good makeup tutorialist today and actually put my hair back this time. So I am not really a believer in makeup primer, but I've already gone ahead and done my skincare, which to me is me priming my face for makeup. I did recently post a video sharing my AM morning skincare routine, so if you're interested, you can go check that out. But the products that I use to prep my face today are the Cosrx Nail Muse in Essence, and then I went in with the Vitabird Dual Drop Serum, which is a vitamin C serum, and then I went in with my Air Repair Moisturizing Face Cream. I really especially like that essence. I kind of feel like it is somewhat of a primer. It just does something to really smooth and even out my skin tone. But that is what I've got going on here to prep my face for makeup. Let's just dive right in. So for my complexion product today, I'm going to go in with the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrate. I have the shade Bear. For being a tinted hydrator, I believe that it has a decent amount of coverage considering the other tinted moisturizers that I have. This one probably provides a higher amount of coverage, especially my last tutorial that I did with the Undone Beauty on foundation glow tint. This one provides more coverage. However, that glow tint, the finish that it gives my face is just beautiful and I've really, really come to love that product. But anyway, we're talking about the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator here. So the, the shades, I originally was gonna go with light and thank goodness I watched a tutorial and, and generally I turn to them as kind of like my go-to shade, like whatever she uses, will work, it'll work for me. And she said that the light was actually really dark. So I went with fair. Anyway, what I'm saying, what I'm getting at is that their shades seem to run a little bit deeper than what I thought. I'm glad that I went with fair. It's a good color match for me. Really been liking it and my skin has been responding fairly well to it. I haven't had any breakouts or anything, and, and it's just an all-around good go-to daily complexion product for me. I don't know if the camera is picking it up, but I have talked about a couple of times with my poor dry eyelids, and today I feel that they're especially red looking, especially in the inner corners here, and so I'm going to go in with my Skin Food Salmon Dark Circle Concealer Cream. I know they're not dark circles, it's more redness, but I find that this product does a good job of evening out my skin tone, so I'm going to just dab my ring finger and just dab it around the inner corners of my eyes. It's very similar consistency to the Undone concealer that I am obsessed with. It's a cream product, and I feel that it just blends very, very nicely into the skin. It's not a concealer that I use every day, but when I do feel that I've got some redness going on, some discoloration around my eyes, it's just kind of my go-to to, like I said, even out the skin tone. I'm going to do my eyebrows, but I'm gonna speed up 
so you don't have to sit and watch me do them, but I just want to tell you that I'm using the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in the shade Taupe. I thought that this was my Holy Grail Eye Pencil, however, I just used up my ELF Micro Brow Pencil, also in the shade Taupe, and I think I like that one better than the NYX. It's like the pencil is a little bit softer and a little bit more malleable, a little bit easier to work with, whereas this, I have actually broken it now a couple of times, and I don't know if it's because I'm used to the pressure of the, the e.l.f. and the smooth glide, the easy application of that one compared to this one. It, it just seems to be a little bit drier, which is great because the e.l.f. micro brow pencil is half the price of this. So I think I'm going to, once this one's gone, go back to the e.l.f. and try to reconfirm this new holy grail suspicion. Right, so I finished filling in my brows with the NYX micro brow pencil, but I want to show you one other product that I've kind of been digging lately. It is the Maybelline Brow Define and Fill Duo in the shade Blonde. So one end is a, I don't know if this is a chalk or a powder, but it's got the product in the cap here and then the tip is just like a sponge tip. And then the other side, I have never used this side to be completely honest. It's a thicker pencil that I think would be too warm for me anyways, but I've been kind of liking this chalky side to fill in just to give my brows a little bit more depth right in the center here. I'm probably just not great at doing my brows and so a product like this, something a little bit thicker with a little bit lighter of a product formula, I find that just adding just a little bit of something here just fills them in and makes them look a little bit more full. I, I can see a difference between my brows. This one has the Maybelline Fill and Define brow product in the center of my brow and this one just has the NYX brow pencil. So I just find that it adds a little more fill to the brow. Okay, let's dive into the eyeshadow palette. I'm so excited. I don't know if I said this at the start of the video, but this palette is meant to dupe the Pat McGrath Mothership Divine Rose 1 palette. That palette stole my heart the very first time I laid eyes on it, but that $125 price tag oh, really, really hurts me. I do have two Pat McGrath eyeshadow palettes and they are beautiful, stunning, magical, anything and everything I ever dreamed they would be. But I don't know that I can safely say that it's worth $125 unless you are just a luster over makeup and the art of makeup in general, then I think maybe you will appreciate them the same way that I do and find their value, but otherwise, I don't know that it's worth that price. So I'm very excited to see Ultra Ego now recreating her color stories. I think I am going to try to do a Pat McGrath look just to see if it can be done with this eyeshadow palette. So I'm going to recreate this look here. I'll pop it up on the screen. This is the look that I found on the Pat McGrath website for the Divine Rose 1 palette. The look, it looks like it she creates a bit of a uh, an edge here with the with the eyeshadow. Since I'm not that skilled to just freehand that, I'm going to use tape. It's my secret to creating eye looks that look really professional. <laughs> When I place my tape, I will use my nose as a guide the same way that I do with my eyebrows. So I'm going to start from the middle of my, the tip of my nose here and just create a straight line to the outer corner of my eye and just place the tape in that plane. I really hate when I have my eyes taped up like this and then my boyfriend walks in he's like, What you doing? Get out. So I'm going to start by taking this shade Mystic here and just running that along my crease and starting to build up the outer part of my eye. It surprises me that this is one of the shades that says not intended for use around the eye area. I, I, I thought maybe it's because it's a pigment, but in working with it, it doesn't really act like other pigments that I've used. It's, it's a nice buildable formula. It's not super pigmented like most pigments are. Next, I'm going to go in with the shade Rare, this deeper warm brown here. It looks like Pat goes in with that shade to deepen up the outer corner. Again, this one is surprising me that it's not intended for use around the eyes because just like the Mystic shade, it's one that seems to take a little bit to build up. And I know that's not quite like the Pat McGrath eyeshadow formula. My Pat McGrath, I have her Mothership 5 and that mid-tone brown in there is one of my favorite shades to reach for all the time. I don't know how to describe it. You just go in with the color and it just sits in lace and literally, I know I've heard people say this before and until I used her formula and was able to experience and understand it, it didn't make sense to me, but it literally <laughs> blends itself. And I hate myself for saying that because I know that doesn't make, that doesn't make any freaking sense unless you have used the formula and you know, but it's beautiful to work with. And this one, 
Again, this isn't meant to dupe the Pat McGrath formula. It's meant to dupe the color story, which is just fine. But this one is definitely taking a little bit more work to, to use than the Pat McGrath shadows. Not to say that's bad. Again, I guess that's what you get for $125. So in looking at Pat's eye look, it kind of looks like it's more of a halo eye. It looks like she goes in with that duochrome shade in the center and then it's got the, the darkness on the inner and outer corner. Wish I would have noticed that sooner. That's okay, we can, we can work with that. So I'm actually going to now just go in with an, one of my clean eyeshadow applicators, take that shade Mystic, pat that on the eyeshadow applicator, and I'm just gonna run that all over my lid. All right, so I can already tell you, I, I don't personally mind this, but it's worth mentioning. I do have a bit of fallout here along my cheek where the tape is from that shade Rare. I didn't really see a whole lot of fallout from Mystic, but Rare, definitely. Just wanted to throw that out there. Right now, I'm gonna go in with my mascara because I always get mascara marks on my eyelid. So. Look at that gosh darn mess I created with my mascara. Every single freaking time. So I'm gonna let that dry. In the meantime, I'm going to take the tape off and let's finish concealer. So for concealer today, I don't think I've used or talked about this concealer yet on my channel, but it is the Koki Be Bright Illuminating Concealer. But I do turn to this one quite a bit. So I am just going to dot a little bit here under my eyes and go in with a foundation brush to blend that out. To clean up my, my wings here, I think I definitely went a little bit more <laughs> dramatic than Pat did. That's okay, like I said, I'm gonna put my own little spin on this look, but I did put a little bit of concealer here a little bit closer to the V on my orbital bone here, and then I used my foundation brush to very carefully blend and to really define that line just to clean up. I already did it on both sides. I'm just explaining what I did. I'm going to go in and do bronzer now. I told you in my very first makeup tutorial, tips and tricks video that I've got a crazy weird process of doing my makeup, but it all makes sense in the end. I actually want to go in with my Estate Cosmetics bronzer in the shade Coco. This is sort of new to me. I received it in an Ipsy bag. I think I actually bought it as an add-on here a month or two ago and I've just been liking it. It does appear to be a bit warmer than I would generally go for, but I've been using it and I've been liking it. I really appreciate that it is a matte bronzer. I don't really like bronzers with shimmer in them because I like to go in with shimmer highlighter and oftentimes a shimmer blush on top. So I'm working with the Eco Tools Full Powder Brush right now for bronzer, but I think I'm gonna go in with something just a little bit smaller. I grabbed my Luxie Precision Foundation Brush. Use brushes for whatever you want. Okay, I'm gonna go in now with my Jane Airedale Flocking Sponge just to blend this in a little bit more. My sponge is dry. I always use this dry, but I love using it to blend in my powder products, my highlighter, my blushes, my bronzers. I love, I love this. This is like the best five bucks I've ever, I've ever spent. All right, let's go in and finish the eyeballs. First, <laughs> we're gonna clean up this uh, monstrosity of a mascara mess here by going back in with my eyeshadow applicator that I use to apply that shade Mystic all over my lid. I'm just going to run this over once more just to try to cover up those beautiful mascara marks. If you happen to have mascara markings, like I've got a couple on this side here that are above where I want to apply that matte eyeshadow. So you can take a an eyebrow spoolie and just very, very carefully spool it over, spool it, is that the term? Over where you have that mascara marking and it'll very carefully just scrape it off. Pat's look looks like she takes that duochrome rose gold peachy shade and puts it right in the center. So I'm going to go in with the shade Radiant here. I believe that's supposed to be the dupe for that shade. I'm going to lay down a little bit of that Koki Be Bright concealer right in the center of my eyelid as a base. And now I'm going to go in with a clean flat eyeshadow brush and dip it into that shade Radiant and put that on top of the concealer. Oof. Are you as mesmerized by duochromes as I am? I just, ooh. I, def I can definitely see the shift of the peach and the gold and the pink. Ugh. I'm impressed. I'm, I'm very, very impressed. I'm gonna admit, I was a little bit worried because Mystic and Rare took a little bit of building up, so I was a little bit worried that the duochromes would be the same way, but this is, oh, 
delicious. I'm going to go in with that shade Rare just to deep, deepen up the outer corner a bit more and then bring it down along my lower lash line. It looks like Pat puts a little bit of that shade along the lower lash line as well, so I'm gonna do that quick. Okay, and then to finish up with the eyeshadow palette, it looks like Pat takes that ultra sparkly shade, which in the palette, the shade Sacred here, it looks to be the dupe for whatever shade she's using. It looks like she takes that and runs it along kind of the brow bone area. Should I do that? I guess. I mean, a Pat did it, so I dipped a blender brush here, very lightly dabbed it in sacred, and I'm just going to oh, carefully run it along my brow bone here. Wow. <laughs> oh. oh, it's so pretty though. I'm not sure if my camera's gonna be able to pick up how beautifully sparkly this is, but oh, love it. This to me would be a beautiful topper shade. If you were like me and you always like to add a little bit of glitter shimmer, this would be beautiful right in the center of your eyelid, on your inner corner, maybe even a little bit along your cheekbones if that's your thing. I think I'm gonna put a little bit on the inner corner of my eyelids also. I'm actually gonna bring it up so that it kind of meets where it starts and my brow bone. I like to apply a little bit of highlight or some sort of shimmer color, just right here. It adds a little bit of reflect and I think a little bit of magic when you are up close talking to someone and the light shifts across your eyes. I think it just adds a little bit of ethereal magicness to your look. And then I'm just gonna take a fluffy brush just to blend that, just so there's no harsh lines. And then to finish up the eye look, it looks like Pat goes in with a black liquid liner and lines the lash line. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to use my new favorite liquid eyeliner. This is also from Estate Cosmetics. Opened it a couple weeks ago and oh, I love it. Love it. And it's 12 bucks on their website. Last I checked though, I think they were out of stock. So I am going to be stalking that website and when they come back in stock, probably definitely picking up at least one if not two because i love this liner this brush tip is like the perfect shape and size it's it's it just it's so perfect i love it and love so in pat's look it looks like she lined the entire upper lash line i just went in and went about halfway and then went out with it with a wing this is kind of how i've been lining all of my eye looks lately i did freehand it. I have to say I'm pretty impressed. I've gotten pretty good at freehanding my own wings and I seriously think a large part of it is because of how easy this eyeliner is to work with. I cannot rave enough about this eyeliner right now. New holy grail. So for blush I'm going to go in with the Colourpop blush sticks in the shade 25.8. For highlighter, my favorite my second favorite part of the makeup process, my first is doing the eyes. But for highlighter, I'm going to go in with the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder in the shade Blossom Glow. It is like a beautiful pearly pink. Mine is so badly broken. The lid is broken off. I keep it together with a hair tie. The inside is about to crumble. I just know it, but I freaking love this highlighter. Wet n Wild nails it with their highlighters. And I'm gonna go in with my favorite highlighting brush. This is for Moda Pro. I'm gonna bring a little bit here along my brow bone. Just do, I think, tie the look together a little bit. And then I'm gonna spray my NYX Matte Finish Finishing Spray. And as Allie Glein says. All right, let's step back and assess the situation. But I think I'm quite content with what we've got going on. Should we do a lip? Let's do a lip. Sometimes I will. Lipstick on my lips because I want to look fascinating. Come on, boy. I feel like I'm out of practice with choosing a good lip to go with a look, but I think I'm going to try the ColourPop Just a Tint in the shade Agogo. And I think I'm going to top it with the NYX Butter Gloss and Creme Brulee, one of my favorite go tos. I think that is exactly what that needed. Toned it down, glossed it up. Mm. I think that is it for our look today. What do you think of our completed finished look using affordable products and the Ultra Ego Luster Charm Palette?
to wrap things up i am really enjoying the look that i created today the only new product to me was the luster charm palette so that's the only thing that i'm going to discuss before we wrap up this video all in all i have to say that i enjoyed it like i've said a couple times already this color story speaks to me on a very deep personal level the only thing like i've already said also these two matte shades which are the only matte shades in the palette did take a little bit of building up especially this rare shade i really like to go in with a dark brown shade like this to smoke out my outer corner i really think it's an easy way to take any eye look to the next level and the shade did take a quite a bit to build up and even when it was built up it wasn't as dark as i wish that it could be i wish it was just a little bit a little bit deeper i will say also that i wish that there was more of a mid-tone taupey or like a light brown in this palette i just need like one more matte shade of which can be resolved by going in with my bronzer just to kind of blend things together a little bit more seamlessly that's the only thing that i foresee missing from this palette but i mean like i said you could use your bronzer you could even use your face powder if you want something to help you blend a little bit more so not that this palette is lacking in any way i just if i'm being real picky that's what i wish this palette had but i love the shade sacred i think that's beautiful it's going to be such a go-to shade for me i can see that already this duochrome was very impressive to me i i mean there's been multiple times from other brands other affordable brands their their duochrome it takes a little bit of building up to really get this vibrant of a shift and i'm very impressed with how beautiful this performed all in all i am so happy that i purchased this palette if the color story speaks to you i don't think you'll be disappointed unfortunately i also can't compare it to other alter ego palettes this is my very first time using the alter ego brand however given my experience with this palette i would be more than thrilled to order from them again if they were to release another palette that really speaks to me the same way this one does so all in all very happy with this i absolutely love it i can definitely see this being a palette that i'm going to go to regularly let me know down below if you happen to pick this palette up also or if you're thinking about it or if you have tried other products other palettes from alter ego let me know what you think which ones would you recommend i want to thank you so so much for taking the time to hang out with me today i hope that you enjoyed this video and i hope that you hit that subscribe button so you can come back next time and until next time i hope you have the best day and i thought since alter ego is a generally and i thought since alter ego is and I, since Alter Ego is a relatively affordable makeup brand, this palette. I thought since Alter Ego is a relatively affordable makeup brand that I would use. Oh my god. We might have a special guest for today's video. Do you want to sit with me? This is Trace. He looks so tired. Will you sleep then? use were fine enough to work with. I mean, this is what I was able to create. Is that lip gloss? What in the? What in the heck? Start over. How did that happen? How did that happen?